today we're going to be talking about the metrics that we think you guys should pay the most attention to. Because as of right now, the feedback we've been getting is that you're paying attention to the wrong ones. So Jazz, let's talk about this from a high level point of view. What have you kind of seen from our clients in the last couple months? Like, What metrics are they currently focusing on on social media? I think it's our clients and I just think it's people in general. Like if you actually take the time to go on um, certain social media platforms and just read other people's comments and stuff, you can kind of get a sense of what people are thinking and feeling, right? And um, I think a lot of people spend too much time, especially when they're getting started, mm -hmm. and to our viewers, real estate agents, mortgage brokers, loan officers, um, a lot of them are just getting started with content creation, that they see somebody who has uh, 100,000 followers, they have a million followers, they have 10,000 likes, those metrics are, in our opinion, just not as important as the others. Are they important? And is that something that you should look at? Yeah, for sure, right? Because it will give you an idea if the content is resonating with people. Well, and right? it allows you, if you look at the number of people who are following you, for mm -hmm. example, that might give you a great baseline to start with. Yeah. And once you know that number and then you continue to produce content, are you growing? I mean, of course you want to be growing it, but yeah. I, a lot of people will say to me, well, I don't want to start producing content until I actually have a lot of followers. Well, and I I'm mean, thinking, well, how are you going to get the followers if you don't produce the content? Especially in our business, you look at someone who's doing it at like probably the highest level in North America, um, Ryan Serhan, right? And so we get comments and, and feedback from people who are starting out to mm -hmm. con create content with us or just on their own. And they'll say, well, to your point, I don't want to get started until I have that type of uh, community. How do you think Ryan built it? First of all, the guy had a TV show. And he's a damn great real estate agent yeah. who works his ass off and he's getting the success now because of all the hard work that he put in. But at the start, and we were lucky, we were lucky enough to do a podcast episode with him. Maybe, yes, our team can put that clip from that podcast out there. You play <laughs> videographer, so like that would be kind of cool to show. A yeah. long time um, ago. Like even at that time, he didn't have the the brand and and the community community that he has now four years or whatever, three and a half, four years later, right? And so that takes time to build. Followers are important, um, um, likes are, but not as important to answer your question than looking at is people actually sharing your content? Are they sharing it? Are they saving your content? And are they actually commenting? I think that's very important. Yeah, and I think the, the reason why sharing the content is so important that's because if you if you think of yourself on your phone while you're scrolling through Instagram, for example, you might like a piece of content, but you don't hit the like button. Maybe you do, but that's that's a bare minimum yeah. what you're gonna do. For you to actually think, oh my gosh, my friend would like this, and then to not keep scrolling, for you to actually stop, click the share button, search for your friend's name, click send. Like there's a lot of steps involved and you have to always look at it from like think consider what you're doing when you're at home on the couch scrolling through Instagram. That's the same as anybody else, right? So if you're getting those shares, that means something you said was so valuable that someone took the time to share it with someone else. And that's how you're gonna grow your community because now it's another set of eyeballs on you. And that's really word of mouth in the digital landscape, right? Because when we are at a cocktail party, we're at someone's home, we're, we're, we're here at the office and someone says, hey, do you have a good uh, restaurant to recommend? And at the cocktail party, we're actually hoping that someone says, do you have a good realtor or mortgage broker to recommend? It takes a lot for someone to say, yeah, like you gotta check out Laura, she's awesome at um, um, helping people with pre-construction condos, speak with Chris Souza. he's a great mortgage broker, right? In, in social media platforms, pressing that share button, not only on Instagram, Laura, like if you look at at, at YouTube and, and Facebook, all of them, you have to take extra steps to do it. And actually, just while you were saying it and scrolling on Instagram, right, um, we'll, go, we'll quickly go on Instagram here. And I, I think this is important because a lot of people say, I don't even know how to check my like how, if how my content's yeah. being shared, right? So I'm gonna quickly just showcase, and I don't know which camera you want me to do this on. Okay, can you zoom in? Uh, yes, for me. Okay, do me a favor here. Let's just pull up um, uh, any any post. Go to your profile. You go to your post. You see view insights. You click on insights. So you see, look, the likes, the comments. I actually don't even go there. I go right away to my shares. 
and that's a little triangle button on Instagram, and then the saves. That means 11 people, as of yesterday, shared this post of mine, as well as 11 people saved the post. And why would they save it? They save it for later. Maybe you, you spoke about three tips on, on, on how to buy um, your first property. Someone's thinking, hey, let me save this for later. I'm gonna come back to it. Or to your point, they're gonna share it to their friend. So, and the comments might be a little more difficult for you to track because the insights might not you know, compare your comments over time. But I yeah. think just you instinctively, if you continue to go in and say like, how many people actually commented? Am I getting more comments, less comments? What type of posts do I get more comments on? That's great feedback. And I think where a lot of people miss the mark is they take the comment, but then they don't reply back. Don't you call that something? Don't ghost and post. Or oh, don't like ghost that. and post. Yeah, 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 don't ghost and post. Like, <laughs> yeah. you got to go back and and make sure that that's how you're communicating with people. That's how you're going to build the relationship. If someone took the time to actually comment on your post, make sure that you take the time and the respect to give back to them by commenting, even if it's just a heart or a little fist pump. Like, thanks for the feedback. That's Whatever engagement. It is, that's engagement, and that's how you're going to continue to build the community. Look, we spoke about how to like what metrics are important on the actual platforms and how to actually see them. And on YouTube, if if you have a YouTube profile, just go to your YouTube studio. You can see how many times your 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 last video or even any video got shared. Uh, there's not a save on YouTube and Facebook's quite easy. I think there's one other metric that is very, very important and it's not black and white like the ones that we just spoke about. It's what's happening offline, mm. right, Laura? Like, mm. like what's happening in your DMs in Instagram? It, are are people sending you an email? Did someone at the office say something that they noticed. That's the biggest thing. When we started producing content, I would say to Jazz, Jazz, look, like I don't think I'm not I'm not getting any more followers. I'm not really getting a lot of likes. And I'm not getting any shares. I'm not getting any shares. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, I'll take a trip down the hallway in the office, and it's Laura. I saw your post about X Y Y Z, and that inspired me take action today or Laura um, if I'm talking to someone on the phone a client on the phone like Laura you already explained the HST charges on your Instagram I saw it I already know everything and, that's involved and what about when you actually call people like you call your clients and to your point they say not only like I saw that video what about the ones that just say oh my god Laura like I'm watching so much of your content mm -hmm. right now it's so inspiring to see another know, woman do it I don't it even or something. know where I saw you yeah you get that a lot well I get that a lot <laughs> like yeah because I'm on all the platforms right um and I mean my offline metrics are I don't know 10 times bigger than my online metrics in terms of shares and saves. And for me, I, I, like, I'm glad where I'm at right now. I'm very grateful where I am at for my shares and saves where I can actually see it on, on, on the Instagrams and the other platforms, but it's the offline stuff. I really can't go to a party anymore um, or even to like a family member's house with someone saying, dude, you're friggin' everywhere. We love your videos, or you kind of we don't like it. That, that's feedback. I mean, yeah. it's not the feedback that you might want to hear, but it's still feedback that you're getting, right? I think the most important thing now to note, like when we're talking about which metrics to look at, and you're thinking, okay, I'm not supposed to care about the followers. And here's the thing: you're not trying to correct me if I'm wrong, at least for our viewers from the purpose of who we're sending this out to, be a YouTube star or an Instagram influencer. You're trying to help people buy and sell real estate or get a mortgage of that sort, right? And so if that's the perspective, all that really matters is that in time, you're doing more deals and doing those deals is becoming easier. You said I.e. people are referring you to their friends and family, i.e. you've built up enough rapport that they trust you and then they take your advice a lot easier. That's really what this is about. And so that's why like, I do not recommend buying followers. That's, that doesn't do anyone any good. Like just, even if you only have 300 followers, but those people love you, trust you, and will refer you, that's that's the only metric that matters. Only because I've done the math so many times in my head, I'll use the 200 number, right? Where the average person knows 200 people, and so if you know 200 people that know 200 people that know 200 people, and so on and so on, your network is now over 40, thousand people. The problem is, is that we try to get to 40,000. So we do these like really dumb things, buying followers. It's the stupidest thing in the world because the algorithms know that you bought followers because they have a way of telling and then they actually push down your content. They don't even put it out so, in front of people. And I actually think like from a mental perspective, 
like you got to check yourself for a second because if you're buying followers, that means that you're 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 scared of something. You have this insecurity. I mean, we talk about that in so many so many other pieces of content. I didn't want to go there, but I did cut you off. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, you you want to just know like, okay, if I buy followers, yes, the Instagram or the algorithm might push it down. Not yeah. only that, but people can tell. Mm, I can go on true. anyone's profile and know when they've bought. Followers, yeah. the reason I can do that is because you go into any single post and they might have some likes, but they have no comments because it's just a bot giving them all those followers and likes. And no one's actually sitting there making a nice remark. There's no community built. And if you're doing this to get deals done, then what are we doing here? What's the point? It's more depth, not width. We've always tried to promise to keep this under 10 minutes. We actually only probably got to 10 minutes and 42 seconds today. <laughs> Did you want to leave people with one thing and then... I just want to leave people with let you guys. We need your feedback. You let us know and take our approach here. Ask people for their feedback. Ask to write something in the comments. Ask people at a dinner party. Are you liking the stuff that I'm putting out? Is it resonating? Is it helpful? And that's how you're going to grow and that's how you're going to change. Can we ask them to subscribe too? Somewhere here. Press the button if you're watching on YouTube. Subscribe. Why not? <laughs>